so I decided to give BSPWM a shot over here and uh, it's actually not bad um, you know it's just like any other um, window manager you know you have your workspaces um, you know you have access to a bar if you if you want to use one uh, this one that I'm using right now is actually polybar and I think that this is probably the most complicated part of it and it wasn't too bad because if you compare it to DWM yeah you know you need to know uh, C and probably some bash to integrate things but maybe on uh, uh, polybar and BSPWM you might find it easier uh, because there's just one main configuration file and um, the one issue with that is that um, it'll take quite a bit to to learn everything so well not not a long time it shouldn't take you that long but it's just you know you're understanding somebody else's logic really to implement this uh status bar over here but um this is the formatting of it now uh, when i compare it to uh, dwm i think uh although this may be more i mean sorry less uh, sort of time consuming in terms of like your overall knowledge because if you write it through bash and for DWM uh, and you just set the main root window that may be a little bit more I guess complicated in the sense of the coding itself may be a little bit more difficult but this is also hard in the sense that you have to understand the formatting of the file itself and there are so many options so I don't know it's kind of like a you know sort of you know like a double-edged sword there there are uh, pros and cons to both of them and for me uh the the main con here is that you you know i had to read the whole documentation and see exactly what these commands do in order to set everything up but once you do i mean you can get this entire bar set up and it's pretty uh nice it's not too bad um i'll show you right now when i plug in my pc um, I have a really nice uh, animation here for charging and I got this all from from a website here that provided it uh, and you can see that the animation is running and it's really smooth um, I can mute, you know uh, change brightness you'll see that it will update the time is really dynamic you can click it and get a different uh, menu so it is really um, it is really nice honestly and probably easier for some people in terms of you know how much coding experience you have because here you just have to learn syntax and it's kind of like coding I guess that's a part of coding but it's not as in-depth but you will probably find that if you know some C you can get through DWM really really easily um, so another big difference between the two is that um, BSPWM you don't build the source right so you, I mean, I guess you could build the source, but that's not how you're intended to edit things, right? So to edit um, the configuration file, you have to go into the uh, config directories of two different places. Well, three if you count polybar, but so for the keyboard, for like your shortcuts and, um, and stuff, you have to go and edit this file here this uh, sxhkdrc file and this is the the file that will control all the shortcuts so for example by default um, there was no lock screen so I just added my own which is just super plus L and then you know lock a uh, slock the um, the suckless lock screen um, so it's a, it's really similar of course but the syntax is a little bit different one thing that bugged me though which um uh i found really annoying was this here uh, for the media keys this is how you have to define them for whatever reason uh they don't take the actual name that belongs in the uh, library so if we go here um uh, so if you go down here you will see that this is how uh, the the keys are defined and in DWM 
if you want to use them and tie them to some function call you would just copy and paste these names right after importing the library but in bspwm for some reason this is how it reads it here you have to remove the underscore and the uh the, the other two characters i don't know why it's a little bit annoying because i didn't know that it needed to be formatted this way but uh this is how it is uh to edit some properties of uh of uh, BSPWM, you would go here and edit this file. Uh, so, to get your workspace tags, you need to have them be uh, matching your configuration file. So, they need to be set here through this configuration, and then you also need to go back into the configuration uh, file in, in Poly uh, in Polybar and then make them match so that the workspace is aligned. Um, you can configure the width, the window gap, and some other settings on here. This is also very important. You have to link um, the launching script if you want Polybar to launch automatically at start. And very, very important, you have to make this executable with a uh, chmod command. Uh, because I didn't have my bar uh, auto starting, and the only reason why. Uh, I, I caught it and I noticed that that was the issue was because when I went here, um, oh, I went backwards. Uh, so when I went here um, to polybar, then I did an LS. I noticed that the, the, the text for this wasn't uh, Highlighted, so it meant that it was a regular file. So then I ran, you know, mod uh, plus x uh, launch, and that fixed it. Then that started the auto launching of everything. Um, another thing that kind of bugged me is that uh, my default polybar is just a black screen, basically. So you don't even know if it's running or not. You know, the only way that you know is by launching a terminal like that. And if you have a terminal running, you you'll know that the um the window manager loaded. So that was one thing that kind of annoyed me. I mean, but I could have done more research on that, I guess, but um after getting that, you know, getting through that, it was pretty easy setting it up. Um then for the actual poly bar, let me just go uh, that would be here. Okay. So this is how you configure it. You have to tell it the monitor. There's also a fallback monitor. Um, then there's this strict setting here. Uh, so I set that to false. Um, this is for the driver. If it has a different name in some uh, in some drivers, um, this I can't remember. I read the uh, the documentation, and uh, it's some window properties that. Um, you don't want overridden um bottom is just the placement of the bar so that's neat that's that's a plus i guess compared to dwm um i'm not sure if dwm has bar placement maybe it does in the in the config i i can't remember right now but um that's something that's easily configurable here um, I, i'm actually going to make a bottom bar because i think this desktop can look really beautiful if i put more work into it this was just something i scratched up together pretty quickly uh, then there's fixed centering uh the height the width um i set the offset like this because i wanted to push the bar a little bit farther that's why i also uh lowered the width then the background the foreground of the bar uh, this I'm not too sure I can't remember I left it out because I didn't think it was necessary if you want to have your curved edges you do it like this you increase the radius here line size is very important because uh, that's how you get the underline I mean if you want the underlining if you don't want the underlining you don't need it for me personally I have it set up as like red if uh, red and blue if there's a, a program open uh, but I'm not there it's gonna be blue and uh, red if uh, there is no nothing open in that workspace, it's blue and white. If there's um, an active tab that I'm on right now that I'm looking on, it's all red, and then the text inside is white. I mean, yeah, yeah, white. That's how I set mine up. But if you don't have this line size set, you will not see the uh, the underline there. 
um, then this is how you set up the bar. You just have to tell it uh, what do you want on the left side, what do you want in the center, and what do you want on the right. So um, for me, I, I just said, all right, on the left, I want to have the window manager. So the workspaces go on the left. The title of the web page or whatever that I'm on will go in the center. And then on the right side, I just set it to wireless network and then uh, my battery followed by audio, then the backlight, then the date. Uh, this is also important here. This is for the, uh, the fonts. So um, if you want to have different fonts and different glyphs and stuff, I'd recommend adding the fonts like this here. Uh, four is an offset. That's because uh, things weren't aligned properly. So, uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't aligned from the top vertically, I think. And this is like an offset trick here that you can use to push them down. Um, and this is how I aligned everything to make it look better. Then for the battery, um, you just set the type. When's it full? Um, this is, I guess, only if, if it never goes to 100% because some batteries have some sort of protection, I guess. Um, you have to tell it what's your battery and your adapter. You run this command here and um, and you'll see that it'll, it will, uh, um, it'll pop out whatever yeah so that's that's what you fill in there then um, what else we have the checking interval the formatting um, you can have a bunch of formatting I got my own uh, icons here and I set it to these it has some other icons by default but I like this flat look here um, and you you know it goes in reverse to while discharging and charging so it's all pretty straightforward um, I think that if you I'll link it in the description below and you guys can see where I got everything that I'm using here um, trying to see if there was anything tricky that I had to do to get some stuff working because um, everything was pretty straightforward I think um, yeah I think that Oh yeah, I need to add the CPU info. I'm just gonna wait and make a bottom bar for that one. But um, that's that's pretty much it, I guess. You know, it is a little bit more flashier doing it this way uh, through BSPWM. But I guess you can use Polybar on DWM. But you might have some issues maybe with like. Uh, the workspaces but I guess you know what you could do is that you could push this bar farther out and decrease the length of it and maybe that might help if you don't want to have um, uh, D, uh, DWM's like workspaces get sort of confused but I'm not too sure about integrating uh, this bar into DWM it would be interesting but I think you can do it um, but in my opinion, after using this, I think that it's easier to just do the C scripting, you know, not not scripting, the C coding, and um, configure your your DWM desktop than it is to do this because you got to learn all of this. You have to understand what all of these parameters do, and um, if there's a syntax mis mistake here, it's really hard to see. At least with C, you know, if you have a bug, you try to compile it and it'll, you know, it'll spit out some error, right? And this will also spit out errors too. But, you know, if you're an everyday user, I think it'll be harder for you to see what the error is if you're making an error in here. So I think that, you know, using DWM, although you need to have some coding knowledge to do some things, I think that maybe that's a little bit better. Um, and also the scripting too. You just have to edit the um, uh, the the main window here to make your status bar on DWM, which I really, really, you know, I enjoyed doing that. It wasn't really that bad. It wasn't too difficult. But here you would do it through this configuration file. So I think it's really, you know, personal choice and um, uh, preference, you know, on what window manager you want to use. Like DWM is just straight to the point. This thing. Uh, on here can be a little bit more dynamic a little bit flashier you know so it's really you know again personal choice but that's just my take on on these two managers so that's about all 
I hope you found it useful.